Ripple fires back at SEC unreasonable demands in big new filing, XR Community reacts. In the most recent turn of events in the ongoing case that Ripple is involved in, the company has objected to the SEC's request for post-complaint discovery. In a fresh tweet, James K. Philan, a former federal prosecutor who frequently provides updates on the SEC lawsuit against Ripple, announced that Ripple has submitted its response in opposition to the SEC's petition to enforce compliance with the terms of the agreement. According to the filing, the Securities and Exchange Commission said Kenneth Nisakis is attempting to compel Ripple to produce audited financial statements for the years 2022 and 2023, produce all post-complaint contracts for the sale or transfer of XRP to non-employee counterparties, a renowned blockchain payments business, is putting up a fight against the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, second, the ongoing legal struggle between XRP and the SEC. Regarding those recent requests for post-complaint discovery made by the SEC, Ripple has recently voiced their opposition to the proposal. Ripple considers the Securities and Exchange Commission's SEC attempt to compel it to submit further records and answer new interrogatories to be untimely and irrelevant to the case. This is the central point of contention in the disagreement. Ripple contests the request for discovery made by the SEC in response to the motion that was submitted by the SEC, XRP submitted a response that was in opposition to the motion. As part of its efforts to compel Ripple to furnish audited financial accounts for the years 2022 and 2023, the regulatory body is also seeking to divulge specifics regarding all post-complaint XRP transactions with parties who are not employees. In addition, the SEC is demanding answers concerning the amount of money that Ripple made from the selling of XRP institutional customers after the complaint was submitted. The response that Ripple provides is resolute, stating that these requests are not only untimely, but also unrelated to the matter that is currently being discussed. The enterprise underlines that the Securities and Exchange Commission had enough chance to obtain this material throughout the open fact discovery phase, but they opted not to do so. XRP can set the CC does not have sufficient reasons to demand such data at this time. Risks involved in post-complaint investigation, the timing and significance of the SEC's requests are at the heart of Ripple's opposition to the cryptocurrency of the same name. Ripple emphasizes that the SECI's late requests come after the fact discovery process has been completed except a limited scope that was specifically authorized by the court. In addition, the corporation emphasizes that the demands made by the SEC go beyond the 25 interrogatory limit that is stipulated by Rule 33 and that the behavior that occurred after the complaint was not relevant to the case. By addressing the validity of its post-complaint XRP sales, XRP is taking the position that doing so could result in side litigation that is both needless and time-consuming. This viewpoint is consistent with the more general mood that exists within the XRP community, which has been paying close attention to the litigation and is anxiously anticipating a conclusion in the year 2024. And answer an interrogatory regarding the amount of XRP institutional sales proceeds received after the filing of the complaint for certain contracts. Unpacking Ripple's answer to the SEC filing is something we should do. As an argument, Ripple contends that the SEC is attempting to corrupt the legal process by requesting information that is not essential. Ripple is contrary to these requests, stating first that they are made at an inappropriate moment. According to Ripple, the Securities and Exchange Commission stack had ample opportunity to seek the majority of the requested discovery while the fact discovery was open, but they decided not to do so and they do not have a solid reason to do so now. Mm -hmm. In addition, Ripple stated that the SXE's discovery demands are looking for information that is not pertinent to the recovery process. Ripple stated that the parties had already litigated whether or not post-complaint discovery was appropriate and that during that discovery dispute, the second never argued that post-complaint discovery was relevant to remedies. Instead, the CC claimed that post-complaint conduct was completely irrelevant to the case. Ripple's statement was reported by Ripple. Following Ripple's agreement, the motion was finally settled. The Securities and Exchange Commission should not be permitted to reverse its cause. On November 14, the Securities and Exchange Commission, DC served nine interrogatories and three RFPs at requests for productions on Ripple. Ripple referred to these demands as unreasonable and stated that they were the company Ripple raised objections to these demands in December, citing several reasons, one of which was the fact that discovery had been closed except for the limited discovery 
that the court had given on November 13. Further to this, the Securities and Exchange Commission could surpass the 25 interrogatories that were permitted under Rule 33 and some of the inquiries that were linked to post-complaint conduct were irrelevant. Ripple further contends that determining whether or not the sales that occurred after the complaint was filed were legal might potentially involve the court and the parties in a protracted ancillary lawsuit. The response that Ripple has given to the requests made by the SEC has garnered comments and admiration from members of the XRP community. In the meantime, members of the XRP community are keeping their fingers crossed and anticipating a positive outcome with the expectation that the Ripple Sec litigation will be resolved in the year 2024. And the necessity of adopting regulatory measures that are more nuanced is brought to light. When compared to the criteria that the Securities and Exchange Commission uses to determine what constitutes a security, the decentralized nature of many cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin, which is developed and maintained by the community, stands in stark contrast. Legal challenges that are still ongoing in the cryptocurrency space, legal fights that are still going on between the SEC and cryptocurrency companies continue to have an impact on the regulatory landscape. One of the most important developments in the case that was filed against Ripple Labs in, in December 2020 was the decision that Judge and Alyssa Torres made in July of the previous year, which stated that XRP is not a security. This decision has established a precedent in the ongoing discussion surrounding the nature of digital currencies. The notion that XRP is nothing more than a piece of code with a payment utility function is the basis for this ruling. Despite this, the Securities and Exchange Commission has continued to pursue legal action during which it has targeted key exchanges such as Coinbase and Binance and classified other digital assets such as Cardano, Onal, and Polygon Mat as securities. These new developments point to the continuation of governmental efforts to categorize and control various areas of the cryptocurrency industry. These efforts frequently result in complicated legal disputes and arguments within the cryptocurrency community when they are implemented. Ripple and the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, are engaged in a legal dispute that is becoming more intense as the SEC has asked the court to compel Ripple to publish its financial accounts and XR contract. In the meantime, Borrow Finance uh, IO intends to grow into an artificial intelligence-based Web3 marketplace. The success of the Borrow Finance presale, an amount greater than $2.61 million, was raised by Borrow Finance through its presale because the project has the potential to reduce the entrance barrier in Web3. Investors are investigating it now. In the fourth stage of the presale, row is being offered for a price of 19 cents, which is an increase from the initial price of 10 cents. XRP is she became close to a major support level. Shiba and you and borrow finance may move higher. There is a governance token for the borrow finance ecosystem that is represented by row through the use of their future revenues as collateral. Members in Web3 can access immediate cash. Non-fungible tokens, often known as NFTs, will be used to create opportunities for financing investments. Borrow Finance intends to alleviate the short-term capital difficulty that Web3 content creators confront as a result of factors such as irregular payments by utilizing this approach. While Securities and Exchange Commission sets new demands, further investigation into the subject is being conducted by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission set.